Harry Kewell's career was one that fell into two quite clearly different halves. His exciting emergence came as part of a Leeds team bristling with fearless promise, but his brilliance came alongside a fragility that meant early expectations were never quite fulfilled. So why is it that he has divided a nation between the adoring and the doubtful? His roller coaster ride of a career holds the answers. Hailing from working-class Western Sydney, Kewell formed part of a talented Marconi Stallions U13 squad which traveled to Europe and Asia in search of new tests after winning state titles. His talents were soon acknowledged at Leeds United, who offered Kewell and compatriot Bretta Merton a trial. Each impressed, but it was Kewell who was allowed to remain at Elland Road. His English father ensured visa requirements were satisfied and his ascent to Socceroos stardom began. His senior debut came a little more than two years later, age 17, before he formed part of the team crowned FA Youth Cup winners during the 96-97 campaign. That team consisted of future first-team stars and Paul Robinson, Jonathan Woodgate and Alan Smith, each of whom joined Kewell in breaking into the senior side as Leeds placed their faith in youth. He had fellow Australian Mark Vijica by his side at Leeds as they set about forming a deadly partnership at both club and international level. Hewell's brilliance was prominent during the 99-2000 season, as Leeds finished third in the Premier League to secure Champions League qualification and embarked on a run to the UEFA Cup semi-finals. The Australian scored 17 goals in all competitions to be named as the PFA Young Player of the Year, becoming the first, non-European winner of the accolade. His performances piqued the interest of Europe's elite, and Leeds turned down a significant offer from Inter Milan for his services, as the club looked to keep together a talented team that appeared to be going places. The following season proved even better, as Leeds reached the top of a thrilling rise and fall saga still etched into Premier League folklore. An exhilarating European run saw Leeds reach the last four of the Champions League, securing famous wins over AC Milan, Lazio and Deportivo La Coruña in the process. Leeds' time as credible contenders for major trophies would soon come to an end. The financial mismanagement of chairman Peter Risdale and superfluous spending turned Leeds into a club in crisis, and a fire sale ensued in a desperate bid to balance the books. Hewell remained for the 2002-2003 season and enjoyed his best-ever goalscoring campaign in the Premier League, with the excellence of the winger and Vijika ensuring Leeds survived another season in the top tier. After scoring 45 goals and 181 appearances for Leeds, his departure came that summer as Liverpool won the race for his coveted signature. The £5 million fee, one which still rankles with Leeds supporters, proved a paltry sum for a footballer deemed among the Premier League's most exciting talents. After the highs of his Leeds days, his career was about to take that infamous dip on your favourite roller coaster ride. Hewell's first season was a success as he struck 11 goals in all competitions, forming an encouraging understanding with Michael Owen and Steven Gerrard as Liverpool looked to build a title-winning team. However, his moments on Merseyside proved only flickers and flashes of his Leeds best. For every moment of wondrous wing play came another fitness issue. Seven surgeries in five seasons tells its own story. He showed some absolute moments of brilliance in the red of Liverpool, and more importantly showed why he deserved to wear the famous number 7 jersey that legends such as Kevin Keegan and Kenny Dalglish had worn before him. Unfortunately they were only moments, glimpses if you will, at what Kewell could do. He will be remembered for his time at Liverpool by most for his withdrawal due to injury during the first half of the epic 2005 Champions League final against AC Milan in Istanbul. He was booed off the pitch by Liverpool fans at the time. They even suggested he had faked the injury. This is when people throughout the football world questioned his desire, attitude and consistency as his injury toll mounted. Fuel became the first and only ever Australian player to win the Champions League. A year later in the 2006 FA Cup final, his cup final curse seemed to continue as he was again forced from the field due to injury, this time in the second half. The fans did not boo him this time, as they understood just how injury-prone Kewell had become. In 2007, he gained form and fitness in time to come off the bench in Champions League final against AC Milan. This time Milan won, however, and Kewell left a season later after another injury hit campaign. Post-Premier League he moved on to Galatasaray in 2008. His transfer to Turkey caused uproar at Leeds, with relations between the club's hostel following an incident which saw two Leeds fans stabbed to death in Istanbul before a UEFA Cup semi-final between the sides eight years earlier. Kewell had been a part of the Leeds team beaten 2-0 that evening, one which saw the Turkish club's supporters disturb the minute of silence. Though league titles eluded him at Galatasaray, Kewell became a fan's favourite with the supporters appreciative of his work rate and quality. He scored 34 goals in 91 appearances, before the lure of home took the winger to Melbourne victory. 
It was a slow start to his victory career, Kiwo making 25 appearances and scoring 8 goals. Unfortunately he did not stay on for a second season and returned to England due to his wife Sherry Murphy's mother battling cancer. Kiwo's career came to a close with short spells at Al Garafa in Melbourne Heart, where upon announcing his retirement he was awarded the prestigious Alex Tobin Medal for his achievements in the game. On the international stage he continued to carry a nation's hopes, never weighed down by them, but rather embracing them. Just prior to his move to Liverpool he played a starring role as the Socceroos dismantled England in their own backyard. Like all the greats he was never content, he always wanted more. The chance to end 32 years of heartbreak for Australian football would arrive just two years later in 2005. Faced with the team that had denied them in 2001, Uruguay, the Socceroos would come into the second leg in Sydney 1-0 down on aggregate. Hiddink would do the unthinkable for the match, drop Kewell. Just 27 minutes into the match Kewell would join the action. He would shatter what the Uruguayan superstar Alvaro Ricoba had labeled their World Cup destiny. His introduction to the match changed it in an instant with the Socceroos leveling the tie almost immediately after coming on. He slotted home the first penalty in the shootout win that took Australia to their first World Cup appearance in 32 years. Once again Kewell would be pivotal to the Socceroos' fortunes at the World Cup, his fate in Australian football is inextricably linked. With a place in the knockout stages on the line, a Kewell strike would send the Socceroos through to an historic round of 16 clash and Australia into a state of delirium. The 2010 World Cup was a disaster for Kewell, his campaign only lasting 24 minutes as he did not play against Germany, and was sent off for the ball striking his arm on the goal line while defending a corner. He was therefore suspended for their final group match against Serbia, which they won but still failed to make the round of 60. After this tournament, Kewell played a major part in what Australians hoped would be the crowning glory of the golden generation by winning the 2011 edition of the Asian Cup. He scored three times in the tournament, but the Socceroos were unable to overcome main rivals Japan in the final. He won 58 caps for the Socceroos and scored 17 goals. However, it followed a trend in Kewell failing to truly win the affections of his homeland. While arguably the most gifted footballer Australia has produced, he was rarely received with the affection reserved for the likes of Tim Cahill, despite his golden boy status. Throughout his career the Australian public and media have written him off for being too flash, talking with an English accent, being overpaid and overrated, all of which can be attributed to tall poppy syndrome of course. But if you look at his achievements throughout his career, there's little doubt that Kewell was world class. It's a career that on reflection has been difficult to assess. In its infancy, it was electric, with no apparent ceiling on what this captivating talent from Western Sydney could go on to achieve. The latter period was significantly less thrilling, like a series that has gone on perhaps one season too far, with injuries playing the part of a script writer out of ideas. At his best he was the sprinkling of stardust to Leeds likely lads, a footballer who moved with poise and purpose, sending defenders stumbling out of his path with a drop of the shoulder. A wand is a somewhat overused terminology in football. But Kewell boasted a left foot, one capable of serving as a sledgehammer or with subtlety to fit the description. Trajectory can have a profound impact on legacy, but Kewell should be remembered as a fantasist of a footballer. He moved bums off seats and often ensured the admission was worth paying. Now I want to know which side you are on. And also, if you liked it, please don't forget to subscribe below.